This is Risk Minds International from Amsterdam. I'm Liz McKean and I'm joined by Professor Damiano Brigo from Imperial College in London. Damiano, first of all, what are the latest trading costs associated with CCPs? With CCPs, the main costs are coming from the margin uh, procedures. You have both initial and variation margins. There is a lot of work uh, uh, right now in uh, assessing how much these mar margins should be. Uh, and there's a concern that these margins could impact the liquidity of the financial institutions that need to set aside you know, some uh, assets and money to cover the margin calls. And the debate is, uh, uh, you know, whether how to co compute these margins in a way that is not too punitive for the mm -hmm. banks, but it's good enough to be uh, co uh, facing the risks that the financial institutions might uh, have. And in this sense, uh, this is one of the costs, uh, the implied liquidity costs, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, uh, setting up uh, these funds for the margining process is, is clearly a cost for financial institutions. And the methodology for this margin calculation is quite uh, interesting because it has to be a very standard model that uh, you know is easy to compute. Uh, it has to be approved by a variety of market players and regulators and financial institutions, and so by nature it has to be rather standard. But when you standardize something to a high degree, of course it's hard to capture you know, the extreme risks uh, in a way because you have a very simple model. So there is a tension um, on this very simple model and the cost will be associated to this very simple model in okay. a way, which is not very precise, but it's the best that can be done probably right now. now so Euro exit probability indices, can you first of all tell us what that is and also explain why it's so important to risk managers? Uh, yes, so the idea is that we would like to provide the market uh, with uh, a number uh, between 0 and 100% that gives you a probability that a given country in the Eurozone may have a credit event and may subsequently leave uh, the Euro area. So what we do, uh, there's two types of assessment you can uh, use for this. One is uh, um, probability of uh, uh, default uh, called PD in the industry that mm -hmm. is uh, computed based on fundamentals, fundamental analysis, economic analysis, historical analysis and so on. And the other one is a probability that is market implied. You know, We can use the old example of a, a racing, uh, you know, uh, gambling on a horse race. You know, you want to know the probability that the horse wins the race. You have two ways of doing it. First way is you look at the fundamentals of, of the horse, how he is fed, how he is trained, how old the horse is, and so on. And you come up with the probability based on this information. The other one is simply looking at the uh, odds uh, offered by gambling brokers, and from that you deduce a probability based on what people are, uh, how people are gambling. Okay. So one is a market implied default probability, the gambling one, yeah. and the other one is a fundamental based default probability, the rating agencies one. So we combine the two, weighting the two pieces of information by the debt to GDP ratio of a given country, and we come up with a single number for that country mm -hmm. that expresses the probability. So say this number is uh, 80, there is 80% probability that this country will leave the Euro uh, zone in one year. And we run this index in, in the talk I gave here, I gave the example of uh, Greece, uh, Cyprus and Slovenia, which are three countries who struggle, that struggled with their credit conditions and solved them in different ways. Some were bailed out by European uh, you know, stability mechanism, others were not, uh, managed to solve it themselves. And the index reflected this difference. So it's a warning system, an early warning system that when the index goes up, you should check your exposure sure. towards these countries, basically. And what about CDSs? Why do they offer protection in other currencies? Uh, that's a very interesting question, actually. You know, uh, suppose that, uh, again, let's talk about sovereign, uh, mm -hmm. the full probability for sovereign countries, as, as in the previous question. Suppose you want to buy protection against the default of Italy. Would you want this protection in the euro, that is the natural currency for Italy, Italy is, is in the eurozone and the currency of Italy is euro, 
or would you like to have this protection in dollars? Mm. You might reason that if there is a default of Italy, the euro would take quite a beating and would have a big devaluation jump due to the default of Italy itself. And so buying protection against the default of Italy in a currency that would be impacted heavily by the default of Italy is not necessarily a good idea. That's why there is a market for buying protection on the default of Italy, but not in the currency of Italy, the euro, but in another currency, the dollar, which mm-hmm. is US dollar, which is less sensitive to the default of Italy. So in this way, you are better protected. But this introduces an effects, a foreign exchange effect in the CDS that becomes, is no longer a pure credit product, but becomes a credit effects hybrid product. And we study that mechanism. Okay. And how can we use default probabilities that we're seeing from bonds and CDSs for risk management? So we can use these probabilities by um, looking at what they say uh, on the implied uh, likelihood that the country faces a default. Now, the problem with market implied default probabilities from Brown and CDS is that they tend to be very volatile. So that's why, in the, going back to the earlier question, we designed an index mm-hmm. that combines these uh, uh, probabilities extracted from bond and CDS, which are very volatile, with probabilities from rating agencies that are more stable. And the mix uh, plus, plus some smoothing mechanism makes a single number that is not too volatile, but it's uh, still relevant uh, and responsive to the market. So it's uh, basically the gambling consensus between quotes of market investors on what the probability of a given entity defaulting uh, is. And this is uh, really a good number to look at, you know, because it responds uh, very uh, promptly to developments in the market. Okay, Damiano, thank you so much oh, for thank your you, time. Thank you, Liz. Thank you.